Uh, yeah, so I'm very happy to be joined today um, on another Zoom call. We're doing plenty of these in the LGFA at the moment by uh, Ashling and Niall Donoher, who are parents of little Dan. And you will have seen um, the huge campaign that was run recently, Do It For Dan, which raised in excess of €2 million Euros, um, for some groundbreaking treatment um, for little Dan. And we were more than happy to play our part in the LGFA with various fundraisers um, from our members. And we're just really, really pleased to catch up with... Um, Niall and Ashley this morning. How are you guys? Yeah, good thing. Looks yeah, like a, it looks like a lovely sunny uh, morning in the background there, lads. Always nice to have a bit of sunshine. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous here this morning. So I think it's I think today is meant to be um, an absolute scorcher. So we get out at some stage. Well, go on, get the get the sun cream on, and uh, you look like you've, you've you've good tans there anyway. So you shouldn't be too bad in the sun. I might need to get the factor fifty on. Um, <laughs> good man, good man. Actually, can I ask you how little Dan is? He's asleep at the moment. Um, how is he doing? He's grand, yeah. He's six months. Um, he's healthy. He's no sickness at the moment. He's, uh, this is the best time for us with Dan. Is this type of weather? Um, I suppose spring, summer is when we'll be out and about with Dan do as much as we can with him because come winter, regardless of coronavirus, next year, the following year, we'll be isolating. We didn't last Christmas, we didn't really leave our house. Um, so when the weather's good, um, we try to get out and do as much as we can with him. And then when it gets into the milder, colder weather, we're at home with Dan. So yeah, it's all good here at home. Okay, he got a little a special visit from uh, the Garda Shia Khan there I saw on the social media there recently, Niall. He, he big yeah. happy smiles for that one. Uh, yeah, it is. It was um, fair play to him. It was it's an unbelievable thing to do, um, little blue heroes. So um, we were already delighted to have him down, and I think they were delighted to come down as well. So looked to her down for maybe an hour and a bit. And it was um, it was good laugh, and like he was. Delighted driving around the city car and that, yeah. like, you know, so you know, it was just another another thing to brighten everyone's mood. And you know, everyone that was down here all had a had a good old time, so it all was it was a lovely day, in all fairness. Did you guys spin yourself, Niall? No, well, I got the remote control, <laughs> so I was happy enough with that. I get more use out of it now than Dan is. So. <laughs> good man, actually, they're, they're very special moments and very special memories, aren't they? Though, you know, to have days like that, it's it, it's very special. Yeah, it was lovely. We had a photographer that was brought with him, we didn't actually realize it was coming, so it was so nice to text them that photo, and we all tap him, um, and a video, and things like that. So, just to, I suppose, on the day, by in the absolutely actually you're coming in and out a little bit right so but but Niall, your, your your sound is spot on so it might be just where your position guys all right um no i'll bring you back in there yeah okay no problem work away actually i'll probably hear you a little bit better now if you're if you're just uh, nice and tight to the to the microphone there actually can i ask you about the impact of the campaign and, and the journey that you guys have been on. I think it, just looking, I was tracking it most days. It seemed to jump from maybe 500,000 to, to almost 1 million in the space of maybe eight or nine days. There was just this amazing surge um, recently, which was phenomenal. Yeah, to be honest, I actually, I, I never really kept an eye on it myself because you know, home at Dan, you know, every day, like it's um you know, he, you're very busy with him every day. Uh, a lot of work to do with him and he has a lot of things to do with him and he keeps, he keeps me on my toes. So I wouldn't have actually seen it say from maybe day one, two, three and maybe on day five and I see you. But someone texted me and said, you see the campaign, what, what is that? And I see and I look and go, oh my God, what, what happened? You know, and um, it really did. It just, in a space of, like you said, the week to 10 days, it just went phenomenal, like it just blew up, and yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it really was. Here he is, here's that. <laughs> here he is. He's a little bit sleepy, isn't he? Right. Uh, we're well used to the sleeps here, or lack of them, as, as the case may be. Hello, Dan. Hello. Little Hello. Hello. for all our followers. <laughs> it's great Hello. to see you guys. It's great, absolutely great to see him. Um, actually, I'm going to yeah. Work away, work away, and I actually the I think the the virtual lips lip sync was a was a massive one, wasn't it? That seemed to be yeah. kind of a catalyst. So when people saw what was, all of that was going on, it seemed to just kick off from there and spiral from there for a few days. 
yeah, it was. That was amazing. I, I don't know what, what it was before the lip sync, but I know from then on, like you said, it really, really spiraled after that. The lip sync in itself was such a success. It really was. It was such a nice night, though. Um, mm. All of the, everyone who entered and all the participants, like, they were great crack. And we were looking forward to it all week. I mean, sitting down, having a glass of wine, takeaway, and uh, it was Saturday night, so we were looking forward to it as if we were heading out. Um, so yeah, it was it was really good, really good crack. And like you said, from then on, it seemed to just really things really kicked off. But I suppose it was that alongside the GAA, all the runs started happening at that mm. time as well. All the head shaves, all the burpees, the colouring of the hair, it all kind of happened at the one time and it all came together and just, yeah, escalated. But did, did it take you by surprise? Because I know I was talking to, um, I think it was uh, Colin Begley, I was in touch with Colin recently enough, and he was kind of making the point that there would have been some things like gala banquets planned and stuff like that that would have, have to been put on hold, which I'm sure would have been major planks of what you were trying to achieve. And yet... In the midst of a pandemic, the, the human spirit of people and the sense of community, it just got it all done in the space of a week, effectively. It was, it was incredible. The fundraising committee, is, we were, we're not on it. Um, if yeah. were people spread it, they went, they had, um, they knew exactly kind of what they were going to do, as in how they were going to get to the two million in terms of, like you said, the ball, maybe GA matches. I, I'm not too sure, but they had a plan in place how they were going to get there. Um, and then I suppose when the coronavirus started, um, we never thought, never, we thought this is the worst thing ever that's going to happen. It was going to put a damper on the whole thing. And in fact, it was the opposite. Everyone was kind of at home, they had a, bit, a little bit more time. Um, and yeah, this just got so creative. There was such creativity with children and with, you know, people out running. And like I said, doing burpees and shaving their head, and dyeing their hair colour and colouring in pictures. and. It was just so many different things um, that people did for us and ran, ran competitions, their own little campaigns and stuff. So it's amazing what we can do as a country. And we all just do a little bit. As you can see, it was 49.50 days, with the 1.9, probably 2 million raids within those number of days. And I mean, if you do look back at the GoFundMe, a lot of it was all, the, like, all of the fives, the tens, the the 20 you know yeah. it wasn't big i know you had a couple of massive donations but overall it was everyone giving a little bit and it just showed like if everyone just gives a little bit and um, makes a massive difference you might think oh it's only a fiver but look what it look what it did in the end like yeah it's the power of numbers isn't it like and then uh, look those fivers and tenors are absolutely priceless but then uh niall you had someone like seamus coleman coming in with 15 grand which was what was incredible and and even conor mcgregor getting involved it was just it was just amazing like yeah and look i suppose when the news about seamus coleman came through um i i know i was in work i think that thursday or friday morning the easter bank holiday weekend and it was just going oh, start hopping around half seven and um, seamus's donation came in and then to get a phone call from him easter sunday um just maybe a 20 minute phone call between Amazing. the all of us. Um, an absolute gent. Uh, just the stuff he's done for other people in the past. Like it's not a once off for him. We've seen loads of people he's helped out in the past before. So when you get a donation from someone like him and you know it means something to him and he's willing to help out, it, it means a lot as well. It drives it on another bit, in fairness. Yeah, I think he was on social media again last night. He's helping out Steve O'Timothy, you know, that comedian who's doing the, the 5K cycle. So he did a video for him. He's just a, an incredibly selfless guy. Um, now, I was just asking Ashley there while you were looking after Little Dan, the, 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 the impact of the community and, and the, the spirit of togetherness, how did that, how was that kind of impacted on you? Um, like in terms of, you know, there, there was other stuff planned. I know, you know, a, a gala banquet a, a, and that was planned. Um, which would have had to be put on hold. But people turned what is an incredibly difficult time with the pandemic into something really special in terms of, of giving and, and humanity and, and helping out little Dan here. Yeah, I suppose, like, it was an unbelievable, um, you know, 10 days or two weeks when everything started. But uh, the feeling of goodwill was just, it's hard to describe it. Um, even the community around here, like, we were living on the old main road, so we would have seen 
emo jerseys, the Dempsey jerseys, Port Harm jerseys, Connell's jerseys, Porter jerseys, all running by the house on different days. And look, it it's it just was it was unbelievable. Like, and I think we're all missing football and we're all missing certain things in life, but it made everyone kind of forget about all the other stuff outside of life. The oh. so one I, I miss terribly going down football and training with the boys, but it was nearly like everyone was doing something for that 10 or 15 days or what's that group's going around, we're doing this amount of running and everyone was doing something together. So it, it was unbelievable in fairness. But I know our club back to get like for that two or three weeks, oh. um, really everyone was in it together and I know other clubs were contacting us, telling us that was nearly the best thing that's happened to them in years that it got the whole club back together wearing their colours all out and about in their twos and threes like it was just an unbelievable few weeks uh, and there'd be a bit of rivalry between Leash and Kildare I'm aware of but there was even people in Kildare were doing some great stuff for you as well so you know it's just yeah, we're, it we're, right on the bar- we're, yeah. we're on the border here with Kildare so Polly Kelly bikes are running by the house <laughs> yeah, brilliant seven lads on bikes um, they were all in fairness all doing their bits and you know it was unbelievable to see because Guys, I guess, you know, during this this thing that we're going through and we, we've two little fellas here and trying to keep them amused is, is a challenge at times and we've another one on the way in August, so we'll have our hands full. Um, you've good days and bad days and I'm sure with Dan that there's there's days where you're full of hope and there's days where, you know, things are, are probably not quite as as bright. How, how are you both coping, can I ask, Ashley? How, how are you managing to get through all of this? Yeah, I Days when you wake up, and you kind of right, it's going to be fine, it's going to be fine. And you know, like, I suppose then the next day, kind of reality kind of sort of comes more to my mind. But you might not be grander, you know, you kind of see him and having lost the ability to do so much. Um, yeah. you see other kids his age and what they can do, and that's really hard because I suppose when he was born, we we thought he was absolutely perfect and we would have had, talked about so many different things to do and then he was doing so much he was, had the ability at three months to do so much and then see him lose it all right in front of our eyes that was, that was really really hard to watch and and to be told us that for, for months to be told oh he's burned he's burned and then I suppose when we got diagnosis it's mixed emotions like you know be some days you'd be really upset and then there's other days like I would be really angry that he oh. didn't get diagnosed sooner because had he started treatment sooner, he would be a better chance. Um, and then there's other days you're just really sad about the whole thing. And again, then, it, like you said, other days you, you're full of hope for him and think he's going to defy all the odds and he's going to be the one that turns three, turns four, starts school. Um, yeah, Dan will be in a future, but that's fine. Um, so a lot of mixed emotions. Um, and even just getting your head around diagnosis, like I mean, it's only diagnosis in December. Oh. We're still learning about SMA, we're still learning what to expect of that, or you know what I mean, trying to get your head oh. around this diagnosis in itself is, um, it's difficult enough, yeah. Just, just as, a, as a dad, when I see him there, he's such a beautiful little child, you know, and he's, the, 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 I think the, the, the picture of him, um, the pro, he's got the most be- beautiful eyes as well. He's just, he's so precious to you guys. You know, I get a little bit just emotional kind of trying to think about what you're, what you're going through and what you're trying to, to manage on a daily basis. Um, it's, it's, it's an incredible journey that you've been on. I, I'm sure there's been some real challenging days as well, but when you see what's happened over the last couple of weeks, it must really just give you that joy and that sense to, to keep battling on and, and keep going. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, we see not alone our community where we live, my own community at home, like communities across the whole country get behind Dan and they're all rooting for him and they all believe in it. Um, and that definitely gives up us the drive. Um, you know, we, ha- we have good, we are very positive people in general, but when we see the whole country coming together to help us and to help Dan, it, it really does push us on and, and drive us on to do and we will and continue to do everything we can for them. 
Yeah, we wish you well. We wish you so, so well. Ash, you had some great days in the, in, in the Leafs jersey as well. And it would be remiss of us not to talk about those as we are. Uh, the Ladies Gaelic Football Association here, obviously. Um, what springs to mind when you think back on, on, on that career, Ashling, the, the highlights in, 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 in the colours of Leafs? Um, God, she, there's so many. They were great days, like, you know, they were the best days. Um, Leash was going really well at the time. Yeah. And um, I was very fortunate, I suppose, as to when I started to play with Leash and my career with Leash. Um, Leash ladies were very uh, strong <laughs> senior. <laughs> <laughs> they were Your biggest fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, we had great days. You know, we got to play against um, the top teams, the Cork, Dublin, Mayo. Um, and yeah, they were just really, really good days. And so I don't know what the best days was. We had loads. We had so many great days. Because we, we had, um, last last weekend they showed Monaghan and Leash, the 1996 final on TG Carr, the highlights from the two games. And I was chatting to like two Ramsbottom last week, Margaret Brennan, um, you know, two, two Leash legends that would have been back in those days. And then I suppose the, the the fortunes might have taken a little tumble and then you guys came along and had a successful era. And there's a little bit of a rebuild again in Leash happening at the moment, Ash. And that'd be fair enough to say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I remember Margaret Brennan, I would have played, I would never play with, with Mark's um, Leash. I went into younger the club. I would have, uh, yeah. <laughs> she would have marked me and she would have been standing on my ankles and pulling my shorts and pulling my hair. <laughs> <laughs> and we got them so well though. Like back then it would have been some more credit yards would have been um kind of I won't say rivals. We were never on the pitch but as soon as it was over we were great friends. Um and Mags was she was tenacious. Oh my god, she really was. She was a brilliant footballer and we were lucky we had Sue on our side. Um but that was I would have played against Mags and, and with Sue, but I never would have played with those with Leash, but I suppose I would have played alongside uh, Tracy, um, yeah. Tracy Holler, like yeah. Angela, and um, yeah. who else could have been? You know, all the, all the girls, like uh, Trish Fogarty, um, Kay O'Reilly, Linda Brennan, mm. and then you have the younger girls. Like, so, so it was me and Noreen, um, Marta, we would have all probably been the one age. Um, and then you'd have like Spallis and Taylor, Jane Moore, my little sister Sarah, they would have all been coming up behind us. So, yeah, at the moment there's definitely uh, rebuild like you said their girls have went down back down intermediate and trying to, to, to build on that now again so they're great players they're great younger players coming up in each at the moment I suppose it's just trying to get the best of every club to get into each and to represent like and now what about the men's side Dublin are obviously the dominant force at the moment are, are Leash going to make a make a burst in the not too distant future um, hopefully so. In fairness, I think um, Leash are definitely making strides at the moment. The senior panel is relatively young at the moment. I'd say, in fairness, to John, uh, two crew, and Mike Burke, they're after bringing through a lot of young lads after getting football the last two or three years, and then the twenties are improving every year. I think you can see it. You can literally see it in club football, and then. In minors and twenties, the the talent is starting to come through. Um, that wasn't probably there maybe a few years ago. Like so, the talent is definitely starting to come. I think a bit better, and there's good underage structures at the moment. So, I definitely be hopeful that you know at least we're going to pop a more consistent show because they've been in two under twenty finals in a row now the last two years. Like so. You know, I think the talent is coming. Hopefully, they can make strides. But look, in fairness, it's very hard to break into the top seven or eight. Like they just seem to be miles ahead of everyone. Anyone that gets in from Division Two up into Division One always seems to nearly go straight back down. So I think mm. the top seven are probably very hard to break into at the moment. In fairness, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what what, what life is like when when we come back, um, guys. How much are you missing football? I know you've you've got your hands full and. There's so much going on there, but do you even get a chance to think about football and missing that? Or I know actually you, you've mentioned uh, you know that life is life is obviously challenging at the moment, but football brings a, a little bit of an extra dimension and a bit of joy as well. It's 
I think everyone misses it, don't they, at the moment? Ah, oh, yeah, definitely. Even my dad was, was a baby. Um, he would have terrible colic, but he just would have cried pretty much day in and day out. And Tough going. To, to be able to kind of leave him and go training for an hour, was definitely such a relief to get, get out of the house for training for an hour. Because it's the only place I find I would actually go and switch off. So if I went out for a walk, I was just thinking about Dan. I went mm. for a drive. Whereas when you go training, you really do switch off. You're there with your friends and you're just focused for the hour and folks and messing and having a laugh for the hour. Um, so I suppose back then it was definitely helped for us because we both got out of the house and we both got to go meet our friends and have, have a laugh at training. But yeah, we do miss it now. Even though we are so busy, you know, mm. you still, between the two of us and we really good support around us like you do get out for that hour and um you miss the terrible missing our friends and missing having chat with people and having having a laugh with everyone yeah it's tough going it's, it really is and i hope that what, what's happened over the last little while is um has raised spirits. I think it's raised. It, it just caught everyone's attention right across the country. You know, I, I don't know what the ca- the exact catalyst was, guys. We've kind of chatted about was the lip sync. Was, was that the one that kicked it off? Was it Seamus Coleman's donation? Was that the one that kicked it off? It, it was just incredible. That's the moment when you actually got to to the point where, you know, I think it was just over one point nine million, and you couldn't accept any more because you knew you were there. What was that like? Yeah. <laughs> um... I didn't know, and I didn't realise. I was actually here at one of my friends, she was my shopping on every Friday, and she dropped a bit, and uh, we sat outside and had a chat. And uh, I went up and got my shower and came down, and my phone was hopping. <laughs> um, I didn't realise, I suppose, like I said, we hadn't really been, every day we wouldn't look at it every day. Um, and then the, the announcement was made that they'd, they had pretty much think but what was out there and what was in the account um, mm. and from taking that up themselves they had a fair idea they had done it so it was unreal and I was on night duty and I don't think I stopped crying on night I was right here I I think you're angry was I okay <laughs> yeah it was okay. <laughs> yeah we were just so emotional it was like it was like 10 stone on our shoulders and it was just gone yeah and good. yeah the relief it was amazing it really was um, <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's chatting away there. Dada, dada, is it? Um, well, it was really nice. It was a uh, lovely celebration. We celebrated on Saturday evening. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, we were just so, so happy. Couldn't, we honestly couldn't believe it. It was done and it was done so quickly. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. It's fantastic. Guys, I'm going to let you go. You have your hands full of that little man. He's an absolute beaut. He's adorable. Um, I wish you well with everything. The next chapter whenever wherever that may be uh i hope the results that come through in a couple of weeks are are good too uh, i wish you so so well here in the lgfa we were so happy to play our part in some small way um niall and ashing i really appreciate your time today and uh love and hugs and best wishes to dan Thanks, Thanks, Cheers. Thank you.